have you ever been in a situation where you're just so far in over your head? You identify it, you know it, but then like, what do you do next? Isn't that, isn't that called life? <laughs> <laughs> but I'm talking about another level to life. Okay. Go so, on. So volleyball is big down here in LA. We have this six man volleyball tournament. It's Manhattan Beach is Super Bowl. And the lowest bar for players is you played in college. That's the lowest. It's the lowest. The high bar is you're a pro, paid pro. Like wow. the Olympians, like Chase Budinger, right. usually plays. So my buddy played college, invited me on the team. Of course, I accepted it. But now I'm like, I'm like, I got to star in my role. I'm either like the, the, the guy on the bench going, yeah, yeah, yeah. I yeah, get yeah. in. You're the water boy, and I'm out. You're the water boy. Now I picture you as like Rocky training, like you're out, you're you're doing push ups on the sidewalk and doing well, hills. Absolutely, and... my shirt's gonna be off for like two days. <laughs> I've been eating chicken all week. No, so how long? When is this taking place? Friday morning it starts. We got practice tonight. We have practice Sunday. There's 25 dudes on our team. I think 95 percent of them played in college. 25 dudes on your two teams one team no one team and it's six on six so you, what is 25 I, I, we're stacked we're stacked where do you where, where do you stack where, where where do you fit do you know where you fit in the team are you top 10 i'm back you... line i'm the libero i'm probably like fourth or fifth string okay <laughs> <laughs> so hey gotta get ready you never know you, you never, never know, know when your number's called. Roll I could get in there for like two points. They could be crucial points. I like your um, your idea of just being the the enthusiastic, kind of the motivational guy. The, yeah. you know, maybe you're calling out things. Yeah. Right? Is, is that a thing in volleyball? You know? Oh, like, absolutely. You know that saying, the worst player on the team talks to the trash? That's yes. going to be me. I'm clearly, I'm lower than the bar. <laughs> Give me a trash. Give me just an example of trash talking in volleyball. Oh, we set that like we set your mother last weekend. Whoa, whoa, whoa. You're kidding, moms. Okay. Kidding, kidding. I won't go there. I don't know. Yeah, that's one thing you probably should explore. That, that in and of itself is probably more important than maybe the push ups on the sidebar. Exactly. But let's explore this episode. Mm -hmm. Welcome to Big Ben and K Win on nofilter.net, caffeine TV, and YouTube. We got audio podcasts as well. So download, listen, and subscribe. Today, we're going to talk about the Major League Baseball trade deadline, the Summer mm -hmm. Olympics, Summer mm -hmm. Olympic stars, Summer Olympic bust, and much, much more. I'm K Win. He's Big Ben, and he can't stop watching the Summer Olympics. <sighs> I, you know what the summer they're tough to capture like you 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 got to take it for what it is just turn it on watch whatever you're gonna watch last night we watched synchronized diving okay you know you never know what you're gonna get you can you can tee up what you want to watch but it's usually odd times due to the fact that it is in France so um, tape delayed it is all I mean that is kind of nice it's like packaged so if you wanted to watch a particular thing you can go in and watch it on on demand I saw your video on that. But you can't go to your phone and ruin it for the live coverage. Right. Or vice versa. Coverage. Right. Yeah, one of those two. Here's what I found interesting in the Olympics. Okay, you, you'd think the most populous countries would do the best, right? Hmm. But what's the most populous country in this world? China. India. Hmm. How many medals does India have? You want me to go to the official medal count? I think I looked last night, and it's not many. If any, to be honest, I don't even see them on the top 30 list, but look at what they're focused on. They're focused on Sati Mandela, <laughs> right? They're, they're focused elsewhere. They're focused. Yeah. They're, 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 their national sport is cricket of all things, a five day event, you know, with guys, that's the most, that's not an attractive Olympic sport. Not <laughs> yet. Know? I think they will bring cricket in. Uh, they will bring cricket in, but it's not it's not attractive to the viewer. No one wants to sit there for five days and watch a game. But then you have China. And here's where I, I'd like to bring the focus. China is the second most populous. In fact, it's got four to five times as many people as the U.S. And China's catching up. Yeah. They have focus on sports now. Um, I watched synchronized diving, and then the China team was absolutely nails. Absolutely nails. 
And we're seeing it this Olympics. I think they're leading the leading the Olympics in golds right now. Not total, but golds. And the Americans are no longer dominant in things like swimming. Mm-hmm. Michael Phelps isn't around anymore to get 15 golds in Olympic in any Olympic event. So uh, I found it interesting. Just I mean, there's some nuanced events that the Americans are good at. BMX, you know. Um, <laughs> park skating or whatever that is. And I don't think China's necessarily focused on those sports. So what have you seen? I also saw China in the mixed doubles gold medal game against North Korea. China won mixed doubles. That's men and women. But what was more intriguing to me and why I was watching it, because with the rules, if I serve and I'm playing with Jen and I'm playing against you and Char, I've got to serve the ball. And then you've got to hit the ball and then it rotates and then Jen has to go. Then Shar has to go. So it's all about angles and corners. And it was just an awesome event. I've been watching hours and hours of table tennis. And that's why I love the Olympics because I can watch sports like table tennis, judo, fencing, sports that I normally don't watch, but I'm watching world-class athletes and I've enjoyed it. The best of the best. And then you have a, a sport like surfing, which is done so far away. They're living on a, I think, a cruise ship. But they, you've seen some amazing, amazing footage from that where guys are just killing pipelines. And then one dude soared in the air like 20, 30 feet, uh, plunged back in the water. The other footage they'll release is that's going to be Temptation Island 3, what happens <laughs> after. <laughs> Temptation. <laughs> Temptation cruise boat. <laughs> <laughs> I get you. I get you. Well, um, I, the Olympics, I mean, they're long, but they're short. Yeah. Because it's packed, right? There isn't like, uh, you know, today's event is this, where everyone's focused on that. There's just a plethora of stuff to watch. It just starts fast. And then as it transitions from swimming to track and field, that's when you know you're getting to the end. And we have track and field coming up this weekend. And this is why I want to ask you, who is the fastest man in the world? Um, God, it's not uh, De La Cruz from the Reds? No. No. He's no. not. Tyreek Hill? Nope. Um... He's on the U.S. He I'm proclaimed stumped. it at the opening mm-hmm. ceremonies. Self-proclaimed? Self-proclaimed fastest <laughs> man in the world. No Elias on the U.S. And everyone is upset. But don't get lost in the details because technically he is the fastest man in the world of active sprinters, right? The GOAT, Hussein Bolt, is still the holder of the world title, the world record, which he got, I think, in 2009 in Berlin. He ran a 9.58. Got to go to my notes, get that right. Noah Lyles, two weeks ago in Paris, ran a 9.81. So technically, he still is the fastest active man in the world. And why I'm excited is because track and field, you've got the 100-meter hurdles this week. And then you've got the, I'm sorry, you've got the 100 meter sprints this weekend. Mm. Then you have the 200 sprints early next week. And then you have the 400 relay. And he's trying to do what Usain Bolt did. Gold, gold, gold. So we will see. That's so hard. I like it, the you look at the difference in 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 events, even from the 100 to 200. Like that's, that's an extremely different event, um, obviously. But when you talk about trying to piece those, because you, you have a four by one team. Yeah, you probably have a four by two team, and you know you have to look at it. Are those day those events on the same days? Are you gonna be Are you gonna be exhausted? They stagger it a little bit. A little bit. It's the do you say think, bolt rule? <laughs> do you think the being the fastest man is the still the the, the epitome? Like, do you want to be the the fastest man in the world, or do you want to be the quarterback for the NFL Super Bowl championship? Like who, I want to be the fastest man in the world and win a gold medal. And that's simply because the fastest man in the world, anyone can run, right? Most for, outside of like the Paralympics and, and so forth, but anyone more or less can run. Yeah. So to say you are the fastest amongst able bodied people is you're the fastest amongst billions of people. I told right? you last week, it's like the heavyweight 
boxing champion of the world. So much respect, so much res- props. Everyone argues about it. Like whether you're in the barber shop, you're with your friends, you're watching TV, you're on group chat. Everyone talks about the heavyweight champion of the world. Everyone talks about the fastest man in the world. And you saying held that title for so long. All of a sudden, you're m- remarkable. I mean, you see. You I mean, see technically, that. still holds a title because he's got right. the world record. But I like the bravado. Uh, I do too. And you're all, all of a sudden remarkable or marketable. Imagine if it's an American. That's that's why guys like Carl Lewis, Michael Johnson, like were so alluring during that period because they were Americans, and we weren't necessarily you know, known for the fastest American, right? Yeah. Like I don't know if it's genetics, but we'll see. Does he win? Does he hold? Does he hold the title? Does he follow through? Self-proclaimed fastest man in the world. Does he see when he self-proclaimed? That's and you lose. Yeah, that's almost a bigger story if you win. But don't you need to win and break the record to be the fastest man in the world? I think it's you got to do two things this weekend. Which is what? Win the what the semifinal? Win the final, and then during the final. Break the world record. Well, you're still the fastest man, unless unless there's some sort of event where Usain Bolt comes out and you run <laughs> run against Usain just to. Just but you're to, running against his legacy. You just are That's like tough. Mahomes is playing against Brady's legacy. Yeah. Does he do it then? That's the question. Well, it's either him or Kassain Thompson from Jamaica. So, and I think he runs right around the same time. I'm going to say he does it. But I don't think he breaks the world record. He doesn't break the world record. No. I mean, he'd have to shave off a lot. That's like two tenths is a lot. He's got to yeah. he's got to shave off what three and some change. Yeah. Yeah, that doesn't happen overnight. No. Like unless there's a gust of wind, unless like the wind ate it or something like that. Yeah, I don't think that happens. What else are you watching this weekend? We got the women's sprint, Shikari Richardson. She could be the fastest woman in the world. And have you seen her nails? They're long. That's the key to success. You got to have long nails. Remember Florence Griffin Joyner, those daggers? Long nails, gold medals. I'm watching that. (laughs) Watch a little beach volleyball. Um, Men's basketball, I'm not really watching. Are you? I... I'm looking forward to uh, France U.S. final. I think is the thing that everyone's hoping for. I mean, um, you got your home, the home country hosting com- country with Wemby on the team playing against U.S. I think the difficulty we're finding with the U.S. Remember the Dream Team? Yeah, of course you remember the Dream Team, but they were about seven, eight deep, and kind of there was some ancillary players behind that. Right? People knew their role. We've seen with the U.S. There's a lot of parity on the team. Jason Tatum didn't play in one game. And B right? didn't play in the next game. Exactly. So I think they're struggling with continuity. Like Durant had to come off the bench and save him in one game, more or less. And so I think they're going to struggle, whereas France probably has five, six, seven players, right, that just know that they're going to play, and the rest probably know they're not going to play much. I think that could hinder them or that could, could help them down the stretch. I think U.S. has to switch their model. Because all there is to talk about is who didn't play in which game, which superstar. Like, almost trying to create tension on the U.S. roster. I think they've got to go old school. I think you got to go eight superstars, two, like, upcoming rookies, and a college player. That mm-hmm. way, you're starting eight play, like you said, your continuity. Because now it's like... Can Booker really get in a groove if all of a sudden he's not playing as much or getting the minutes Mm -hmm. and Steph and LeBron? I think it's... Halliburton. Yeah. Like, Kerr's got a tough job. Like, if you're a superstar, do you want to go and be, like, the backup or a role player? I guess that's a sacrifice you have to make. Well, I think that's what Coach K modeled his his roster is over, right? Like, he he did exactly what you're talking about. He's like, well, I'm not going to take the top 12 players because that's just... That's really hard for for anything to take place where you got every guy wanting to shoot, right? Every guy wanting the ball. So I think a little bit of it is Curtis, the first time Olympic coach, coach K held that for a long time. And so he's trying to figure out what works, you know, he's got a lot of ingredients, but I don't think he necessarily has the recipe quite yet. Two and oh, he might not have the recipe and we still might win the gold. (laughs) Exactly. Talent there. Talent. You want to talk MLB? Yes, I do. Okay. 
The MLB trade deadline has come and gone. Tuesday wrapped up. Winners and losers. So I, I read an article by ESPN, or the pundits pass, and I think maybe wrote it, and he listed the winners. It was like anyone that did a transaction over the deadline. Like there was no like, you know, descript. It's like, oh, these guys added this guy. As long as you added someone, you were on a winner. If you didn't, you were a loser. So the were the Giants were, a winner? No, Giants were a loser. And that's why I'm wearing the pods hat. <laughs> So if I, if I, and I, I want your opinion on this too. If I look at what the pods did, they, it's an arms race. Yeah. It's an absolute arms race down the stretch. Now you got to have some offense. You look at like what Garcia did for the Rangers down the stretch and just played out of his mind. Right. But that's all they needed really was one guy. But down the stretch, the pods added so many arms mm -hmm. and it's a chess game. It is a literal chess game down the stretch. You, your starters are waning. If a starter, you know, shows any inclination of falling apart, you can bring someone in in the fifth inning and you can stretch that game and be a little more pragmatic about who you're bringing in based on, you know, lefty-righty matchups, who matches up well. Like that, you need more arms in the bullpen. And I think the Padres have the offense to do it. Pro Far has been great. Machado, like they've got – and then they've got, you know, the new age Tony Gwynn and – is it Alvarez? So, uh, Lewis arise, arise. So what I saw from, from any team out there, I liked what the Padres did. The San Francisco giants didn't add the diamondbacks. The giants added Mark Hanna from Detroit. Yeah, exactly. I mean, who's Mark Hanna? Exactly. But the Dodgers got better, but here's what I'm seeing is it's a tough division. You're going to have to, you got, we all know that, but I think it was what they did is they, they separated themselves from say the diamondbacks as well as the Giants and the other teams, the Rockies. Mm -hmm. It's going to be tough, a tough out against the Dodgers. But again, like you need arms. And they got Hader, one of the best closers. You just can't have a queen. You got to have a pawn. You got to have a rook. You got to have a bishop. Like, because we, I think you see it in, in the World Series, in the playoffs. It's like, it could be the fourth inning. They're like, all right, we're bringing in, a, you know, we're bringing in this yeah. dude just to face this batter. Yeah. And it becomes every out becomes vital. And I think the Padres did a good job of just bolstering the bullpen, adding more depth. And I think when you're the hitter mindset, you know, these guys that are going, okay, if we can get three runs, four runs, we're going to be in a good spot just because we have guys that can come in and get outs. Jason Adam from Tampa, Tanner Scott, all-star closer from Miami. The Padres added them to go with already a good bullpen. Now it's a great bullpen and they shorten the game. And you're right. In the playoffs, it's all about highly leveraged situations, and you need a pitcher who can get a swing and a miss. And they've mm -hmm. got multiple people in the bullpen. They've got closers. They've got people who can set up the closer. Like if one closer pitches tonight and is extended and can't go the next night, they're covered. So I like what they did. They didn't have to do much on offense. So they got Tatis, Arise, Xander Bogart came back from being hurt. Yeah. That's an addition. You got Machado. You got Profar playing. I like what the Pods did. I also like what the Diamondbacks did. Mm -hmm. You know, they got Josh Bell. They got AJ Puck from the Marlins. A lot of moves. And if you look at the Phillies, their number one move was getting the closer from the Angels. And mm -hmm. it goes back to what you're saying. That's what you need. You need more arms in the bullpen. Yeah. And I think that's the issue with my 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 Mariners. Like there was such an emphasis on getting a bat, but what we've seen, like yesterday, Kirby didn't have the be his best stuff. So what do you do? You have to go to the bullpen, right? And and lately it's been cringe. It's almost like oh geez, you know we're holding on, right? And you know you can go get your bats. I think they got stifled with with trying to pursue Guerrero. And ended up with Josh Turner as a as a as a fallback, but really it's you look at it and it is pitching. Like I think the Padres have the formula, and as along with the Dodgers, yeah. just the Dodgers just have to be healthy though. They have the pitchers on their roster, but Kershaw got banged up for seven after three. I don't know if Bueller's going to come back. I don't know if their number one, I can't remember his name, is going to come back. It'll be interesting. Yeah, it will be, and that's the NL West. 
And then, you know, the ALS isn't the best, but the, the Houston Astros didn't do much at the trade deadline. Yeah. They're just trying to get healthy, just like the Dodgers. And they believe when they are, they're probably one of the top three teams in Major League. Phillies, Cleveland didn't do much. Yankees added some pieces. Like, you're, you're seeing the, the cream rise to the top. And there's probably eight really good teams. And then there's a battle for the last play, play art, or excuse me, wild card spot. And then there's everyone else. Yeah. The White Sox are atrocious. I can't believe they didn't trade Zach Crochet. That was just like a PR disaster. Didn't I don't know. His demands were like pitch counts and and something else. Like, so he is a couple years removed from college. He had like soreness in college. He had Tommy John in 2002. They threw him in as a reliever. He pitched a lot. And then this is his first year as a starter. So they're stretching his innings out, stretching his arms. So he'd pitch more than he ever had. And I guess the story goes is he wanted an extension before he pitched with his new team. And he made that known. And now he's still on the White Sox. And the White Sox didn't trade their best asset, who's got a history of getting injured. <laughs> I mean, that says something, right? Do you, if you want an extension, I don't know if you trust your arm. Do you? Yeah. I don't know what happens. I, don't know. I mean, I don't fault him for for saying that. I think he could have kept it quiet, right? Yeah. And then once he got traded, like the trade doesn't go through until it's finalized. So he could have had that conversation at the right time. Yeah. Negotiation wasn't, he didn't take that in <laughs> negotiation 101 in, in, in college. Um, there's... I want to talk about my Marlins really quick. Your Marlins. Florida Marlins. That they the traded 34% of their active... Am I frozen still? Yeah, keep going. You'll break wow. out of it. The Marlins traded 34% of, the, of their active players on their 26-man roster. 34%. I'm still frozen, but I'm going to keep going. They traded nine players. Seven of them were pitchers. They traded 10 players this year if you go back to the Luis Arats. What I'm saying is the Florida Marlins are like the last place team in your fantasy football league. And everyone rushes to get all the players and suck them dry for a playoff run. Take a look at the transactions. If you printed out their transaction log, it would look like a mortgage loan document. There were so many transactions. I don't know how they can stay alive in the market because they just keep trading and unloading and their stars are everyone else's stars. And it's vastly different from the Rays. The Rays do the same thing, but they win with their next generation players. They're over 500. They make the playoffs. The Marlins just can't get it right. I think the Marlins, I don't know. It's not a, as much as it should be with the diversity down there. Um, you know, you'd, you'd expect a little more, baseball fandom if you would but here's what you got you got the heat you got the dolphins got the panthers you, you, yes you have the florida panthers now you have you the miami university crystal ball with the u right they're still reviving that football program and then now you have Messi playing for miami fc yeah like there's you're you're not any secondary you're not even tertiary you're, you might be fifth on a list. You might be lower. You got Florida State. You got yeah, exactly. U, UF. Like they're suffering through the turnstile. I think we saw that. And I think that's what, like, they don't know who they are and how they're going to revamp and how they're going to build a team. Like they, they traditionally have not been, they won a World Series back, when was that? Early 2000s? Know. Yeah. With Don Trail Willis. And they actually won two World Series. Did they? The year they beat the Cubs with Bartman. Oh, yes. <laughs> so I guess they have that for them. They got two World Series. They do, but no one, I mean, Miami is such a, like, you got to win now, right? Yeah. Like, people are down on the heat. They made it to a finals. But where I'm going with this is I think the Miami Marlins, it's all about turnstile. Like, you know, people getting th people into the stadium. And I don't think people are rushing to watch the Marlins play just based on what other options they have. You got an NHL, yeah. So sell off 34% of your team. <laughs> I don't know, you know, what kind of a farm system they have. But you, you bring that up as 
They are the furthest team from our jurisdiction. Yeah. So great. They're not in our <laughs> I just thought it was interesting. Like you just go through the trades and it's like Marlins, Marlins, Marlins. Right. I was like, are they gonna have anyone left? Like I mean, that's one day way to do it. I mean, addition by subtraction. Like you're getting you're getting something. Something's gonna pan out. It's gonna cost you much less than you're paying the person you know that you're you're getting rid of more than likely. But so. I feel like it's almost like a zero sum game for them. Like they're making all these trades to make it look like they're doing something, but they're not getting anything in return that is worthy of the trade. And then they trade those players the next year. So it's like it's like this shell game. They're money laundering. It's South Southern Florida. They're money laundering. <laughs> but if you're gonna rebuild, if you're, they've been you're rebuilding for five, ten years. Your motive is rebuild, right? But obviously they weren't gonna do anything this year. Yeah. Right. They weren't. So why not like look at it as let's go get as many assets as we can. This is the Sam Presti kind of effect. Like let's go get as many assets as I can. Sam Presti gets to the playoffs though. Yeah, he does. Um, but I, you know, Derek Jeter's now an owner. Of, like I don't think they don't know what he, they're no, doing. No, he left. Oh, geez, never mind then. Uh, <laughs> they don't know what they're doing. Let's just let's just keep it up. They have no idea what they're doing. They're just going and getting as many players with cheap contracts and, you know, non-guarantees and all this so that they can try to piece something together. But then again, maybe they're just looking at it as like, they they don't have people. It's, I think it's a tough go. Baseball in Southern Florida right now is probably not, not on on top of mind for anyone. It's either a tax write-off or it's money laundering. So let me ask you this. Or it's both probably <laughs> they're trading for embargoes or something like that. Um, you're giants. Yeah. yeah. You're giants. I got who, who are you rooting for? Who are you rooting for through the end of September? In the national league, the Padres in the American league, the Orioles, Orioles, Padres world series. You heard it here first. Orioles got some pitching. They brought up Jackson holiday. Orioles are ready to go. Jackson Holiday hits a grand slam, and I think for his first one, he was never there. But yeah, sure, he's back. Um, he was there early in the year, slumped a little. He, yeah, he was in a treacherous slump to start. I think it was three for twenty three. Easy, for, easy. You know, you like know. when you don't get to a hundred at bats, the average just jumps up and down quickly. He'll be up to two two forty in a week. His slugging percentage tripled with that grand slam. We can say that for sure. All right, you got Orioles, Padres. I like the Padres as well. The National League, American League. Remember last year you loved the Yankees? I don't hear you talk about the Yankees too much this year. Oh, the Yanks. Like, they're like the they're like the U.S. Olympic team for basketball. It's like they got a lot of players and they're all hurt and they're trying to piece together some things. But Mike Chisholm has played phenomenal. He had a couple home runs. Like he, he might be the spark that the Yankees need. And he's very anti Yankees. Like you look at him jazz and you're like that, that guy doesn't fit the mold as a Yankee, but he might be what they need. Yeah. Like just, you know, let's, let's loosen the tie a little bit. Let's, you know, he's either going to be the gift or the curse. Yeah. Then if he starts slumping, they're going to be like, Oh, he's the problem. Yeah, exactly. New York media will get on him. This first time he goes over four. I, (laughs) I don't trust the Guardians. I don't trust the Twins. Yeah, it's it's probably your Orioles. Wow, like we're agreeing. Up, we yeah. can't agree. Pick someone else. Okay, well, pick the well, Phillies. Uh, okay, the Phillies. I, we actually, I guess, we get to see them. They're coming to, to Seattle. I think this weekend. So I'll, oh, I'll have a better feel. There's yeah. gonna be a sweep in the team. Oh, <laughs> Bryce Bryce Harper is gonna hit one of the space needle. I mean, oh, there it goes. Astros up three after a Philly sweep in Seattle. Yep, and then we got Detroit, and then the Mets. So it'll be a telling telling home stand for the Mariners. Very telling. But I'm I am encouraged. Justin Turner is not the guy you wanted, but he is. He is. He brings a little. Pizzazz. Great beard. great beard. Yeah, great beard. We actually went from Ty France, clean cut, to, um, God, what's our, we brought up a guy, first baseman, a little more grizzled, but then you get Justin Turner, just great beard, good personality, guy you want on the team. And then um, 
you know, if you look at Rand, Randy Rose Arena, he fits a spot too. Okay. Good corner outfielder. So we'll see what happens. All right. Here's my next question before we get out of here. Okay. Do the Americans win the most medals and do they win the most golds? Do they do the. Yes, they win the most medals. It's a numbers game. They've got the most athletes. Do they win the most golds? I would like them to win the most golds. I can't see the probability of them catching the leaderboard. I'm going to say yes. I'm patriotic. Both. Both. Most medals, most golds. And if they only win one, what would you want that to be? Most golds. Most golds? Yeah, because if you look at the medal count, like the team in first has the most golds. I think it's a weighted system, right? Gold should be worth three points, you know, silver you two. Know, I don't, I don't, that's that's, that's my leaderboard. <laughs> It's weighted. If someone wins a, a hundred silvers, I'm not putting them at the top. You're, or a hundred bronzes. Okay, then wait. The, okay, a hundred silvers. Oh, right, 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 right. Just hear me out. Hundred silvers is relative to how many golds? What did I say? It's three to one, so three hundred golds. No, 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 no. So thirty golds is, is relative to a hundred silvers. So if someone wins, a country wins a yeah. hundred silvers. In a country wins 30 golds. You're saying the 30 golds is is equal to the the, the 100 silvers, but yet more yeah. important. Okay. Yeah, and I'm saying they're worth three points. So then the weighted system. I can't do math. I told you I'm not good. <laughs> <laughs> golds should be weighted. And next episode, math 101. Perfect. All right. I'll, I'll get a tutor. I'll, I'll do a word problem. If one country, I got has, a calculator. I've got Gen AI. I don't need to do math anymore. Oh, great, the generation behind this is sorry. Sorry, Kennedy. Don't listen to this pod. Yeah. Anyways, let's wrap this up at Big Ben K Win underscore at Big Ben K Win underscore TikTok Threads, Facebook, Instagram, everywhere you get your podcast, audio podcast. Download, listen, subscribe, five star. Drop your comments below if you're watching this live or even on demand. We go live every week. Nofilter.net, Caffeine TV, YouTube. I'm K Win. He's Big Ben. And I need you to give me a little clip, a little something this weekend while you're watching the Olympics, Big Ben. Um, Paul Skeen's reporting live. I'm, I'm, tr- I'm working. That would be amazing. Uh, uh, yeah. You're done with residency. You're good. You know what we might do? I'm taking my Kennedy to the fair. I might do the fair Olympics. Do How it. fast you what can day? you uh, Sunday. All right. So I'm going to be winning a volleyball tournament all weekend. So there you go. Busy. You dominate the the sand. I'll dominate the, I don't know. Ferris wheel. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Boom. Boom.